Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so today, me and my colleague, Francisco, so we're going to talk about uh, managing a fleet of Drupal sites at CERN. So my colleague is Francisco, and I'm Rajula. So we work as uh, infrastructure engineers at CERN. So we manage all the Drupal infrastructures, all the clusters, and manage upgrades, uh, all the other operations. So before I start, like how many of you know what CERN is? OK, quite a good number. So we are uh, the world's largest physics research laboratory. So we're not like the, uh, we're a nonprofit. Uh, so we work with the largest physics uh, uh, equipment and stuff. And just to give an overview, so this is our, the, this is called the Large Hydrant Collider. This is the biggest ring. Uh, this is a, a, yeah. So we have a couple of experiments on this ring. So this is one of them. This is called Atlas. Just to give an old, uh, slight view of this. The weight of this experiment is 7,000 tons, which is equal to the Eiffel Tower, weight of the Eiffel Tower. So, but given all this, we, uh, yeah. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna start with uh, how we use Drupal at CERN, give a bit of overview, and then we're gonna have a demo. It's gonna be more of a uh, half of the presentation, half the demo, and then we'll have a Q&A. So given all the physics, where does Drupal fit in? So every public website that runs is on Drupal. So we have almost 1,000 plus websites. Of those, we have almost 600 plus official websites, and 400 are on clones and test websites. And we have a community of more than 100 plus creators and site builders that we support. Uh, and most all of this is hosted on-premise in our data center. Uh, we run it, uh, the, we create the machines using OpenStack, and then we run OpenShift on top of it, and then we manage all of it. So just to give an idea of the scale at which Drupal runs at CERN, so these are the, re re the recent achievements. These are like blog posts that were posted on home.cern, which is the official uh, CERN homepage. So we had the start of the run three, which is the experiment uh, started after the shutdown. And then we were, one of the experiments also discovered three new particles. So these were posted in a span of three to four days. And all of this, generated a traffic of almost 1 million unique visitors in less than a week. And we were able to handle all of this without any performance degradation. Uh, this was the uh, record for us this year. So talking about a fleet of Drupal sites, uh, like I said, we have 1,000, and we have a mix of things. We have the simplest of simplest websites and the complex of all. So there are also something similar among these sites. So let's say each of our website is like a vehicle. So each of it has its own features and stuff. They have their own modules, own themes, but there's something common among all of them. So, so we try to jot down the common stuff and then we call it the Sun Drupal distribution. So like an engine, which is common among all the cars. So we bring down all the common libraries, common modules, and then we package it into our own distribution, which is on top of the official Drupal version. So we have three parts on it. One is uh, composer.json, other is the Docker images that we build to deploy, and then we have CI and testing for each of this version that we build. So going through each of this, so this is our repo, uh, and our composer.json is quite simple. So we just take the official Drupal one, on top of it we add all our CERN. Uh, we have our own custom modules and themes that we add on it, and then all the other libraries that are used by uh, most of these sites. And then images. Uh, we built a couple of images. Uh, so we try to uh, uh, copy all this uh, composure, the, the Drupal code that we built, along with uh, Nginx and PHP in the same image. And we use the single image to deploy uh, as a PHP server and also an Nginx server. So all of this lies in the same repo where we do the build. Yeah, coming to CI and testing. So every time, uh, every commit that's pushed to this repo, uh, we first build. So we have two builds here. One is a composer builder and another site builder. Uh, to make build faster, uh, whenever we change com something in the composer JSON, only then we trigger composer builder. For other smaller uh, stuff that doesn't relate to composer, we just do site builder. So these two build an image that has uh, Drupal code with a specific version, PHP and Nginx. And then we also test it. So how do we test it? Uh, we create a 
uh, a test project on the production cluster. So every time the pipeline runs, a new website is created on the production. Uh, and there are a couple of tests that we run, see if the website is working, if SSO is working, and then if it's working, then we use this version image and then we uh, update the website. So yeah, so what if uh, the module is not uh, installed? If, let's say a user wants a specific module that he wants, there are two options. One is they would have to install it by themselves. The other is they need, uh, if it's a module that can be used by every other website, we just add it to the common distribution that we just showed. The second part would be demonstrated in the demo. So I'll go to the first one. How do we do the first one? So for the first one, we use something called uh, source to image. This is uh, an open shift uh, workflow. We provide a Git repo with a composer of JSON. And then we just take this and then we build a Docker image on the fly with this composer JSON, merging it into our original composer JSON and then run and get a composer, new composer.log with both the modules in it. Yeah, so it would be uh, our turn duple distribution composer and then the custom one. So we use the composer merge plugin and then we merge the uh, new module into it and then we this thing runs on the fly, builds a new image and this image would be used to deploy. So this is an example of uh, how a custom composer.json would look like. There's just one line here, line number 12, where we just add the new module that we new module that we want to install in it. Yeah, how was that infra? So now my colleague is going to talk about infra and then the demo. Okay, so my colleague just showed how we build images, how we con how, how we develop and add new modules to the, to our to our images. But the question now is, how do we deploy all this? Uh, so our deployment, like my colleague has said, okay, no, you can sit, it's fine. Uh, uh, we run uh, OpenShift, which is basically Kubernetes with some extra features like security and multi-tenancy. And uh, on our Kubernetes cluster, we have two major components that make everything run really smooth. The first is an operator. It's, called, it's known as operator in the Kubernetes world. It's a Kubernetes operator that works with the Kubernetes API. And we have a second thing, which is called a Drupal site resource. So this is a custom resource that works with the Kubernetes API and basically allows our operator to understand what we are requesting and create all the necessary stuff in order to make our Drupal website run. Um, so here we have basically this, this example of the structure. The Drupal site is a YAML file. I'm going to show an example of this Drupal YAML site in a little bit. And after we have this YAML site, we push it to our cluster and then our operator will interpret this and we'll do uh, the creation of a new deployment of a new storage of uh, cron jobs if necessary ingresses secrets all the necessary stuff so here's an example uh, so imagine i want to create and i'm going to do this in a little bit i want to create a new website and i want the url to be drupalcon and i want a specific version and then i have a few configuration um, values, all, all I have to do is give this to our Kubernetes cluster and the Kubernetes cluster will be able to create uh, a new deployment running Nginx, PHP and some extra stuff. Um, so without further ado, let's go to a demo. Uh, hopefully this is readable. Uh, How readable it is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Readable? Okay, good. Okay, so uh, like I said before, let's go here to my temp folder, make here DrupalCon, and I'm gonna call it Drupal site .yaml, right? And here I'm gonna basically, hold on, uh, I don't know by heart a Drupal site resource, but I'm gonna get one actually, so uh, hold on. So uh, here I have one. I'm going to use this as an example. As you can see, this has a lot of stuff. That mm -hmm. Demo.yaml. And like I showed here. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be too scared. I'm going to explain all of this in a bit. 
Okay, so our name of the website is going to be called DrupalCon, and this is how Kubernetes will understand our, our website. We don't specify the namespace, and on the configuration, we can say that we just need, well, one gigabyte should be sufficient. And then we have a few extra configurations that uh, allow the cluster and the Kubernetes to understand how many resources this website will need. So for our use case, we can just use a, a, a standard database and the standard quality of service, and we don't need any of this. And um, for the URL, we can say Drupal Con 2022, sounds good. Um, and this is the specification of the version. So whenever in our GitLab repository, we want to deploy a new version of Drupal, say Drupal.9.5, all we have to do is create a new branch, call it v9.5, and basically the cluster will be able to fetch it from the container registry and make it run. So this is our specification, and let's say we want to create this. Oh, wait, um, DrupalCon, have I, do I have any, do I have any project with the name DrupalCon? Or do I need to create one? Okay, I have one here. So here, this is a really Kubernetes specific, specific, but basically these projects are what allows multiple websites to live alongside in the same cluster with full uh, separation. So within a project, you are basically isolated with, from all the other projects. So this Kubernetes, this website will live alone and you will not be able to c interact with any other uh, project. Um, so like I said here, let's create the website. So website has been created and we can do a few things here. So I'm gonna... Uh, did you put the demo for the uh, yes, uh, sorry. So what I, I, what I just did is the classic operation. So if you ever interacted with Kubernetes before, you just do kubectl apply uh, and your resource name. And basically what I did here was I, I requested the, the cluster to create this uh, resource, which like I said, is a resource that the cluster understands because we have created this uh, resource into the cluster and we explained the configuration that the operator lar um, reads. Um, so like I said, uh, hopefully we still see some action, otherwise we'll just be looking at old logs. But if we check to the pods, we should see now that our operator has read this configuration here and it will create a bunch of stuff. So we can see here that we already have a pod running. Actually, it should be more than one. Okay, so we actually have two pods running here. So this first pod running is, let's say, a startup. And what it's doing is basically it detected that this website is a new website. So what it's going to do, and we can actually see what it's doing by checking its logs. What we can see that it's doing is basically uh, enabling themes, certain themes. Uh, it's enabling a bunch of models, all the stuff that came from the Git repository. It's basically enabling it and installing it. Um, and well, in a little bit, it should have been done with the job. So it's now completed. We have now the serving pod where actually Drupal is actually running. running. And we actually should have something called the route, which is uh, something similar to uh, Ingress which will enable us to access the website. And this should be available to all of you in a bit, hopefully, if the NS is not too slow. So this is a URL, and if I go here and open Firefox, and open the URL here, ah, voila. Okay, so the website has been created, and as we can see, uh, well, if any of you, if you tried to access the website before, you would have seen that it was not created at that point. We can see that it has already all the look and feel of a classic CERN website. This is basically the vanilla thing. You see the on top the CERN bar. You see on, on bottom the contact, uh, etc. So basically, this is what we provide out of the box to any experiment at CERN. And even more, we configure some of these modules out of the box. So if I log in, uh, uh, probably I have cookies, so I'll automatically be logged in and be shown as an admin. Well, that's it. But if I were to... Uh, copy this and open in private, you'll see that I should get redirected into uh, CERN's SSO. So this is the CERN's login system. Um, and with this, we can see uh, here on the extent, 
that we have a bunch of modules that we can enable if you come enable out of the box. Um, and that's it. So for our infrastructure, let's say to create a new website, all we have to do, like I showed, was to provide a specification of the Drupal site. The operator reads it, the operator creates a deployment, the operator creates a site URL. Actually, I mean, if, you're, if you want to test it out, we can, for example, come here and we say we want to edit our Drupal site, which was called DrupalCon. And we can go here into the specification site URL and we can call it something, we can give it a second URL. Anyone wants to give a suggestion so we see that basically the operator will take air, care of everything for me? Um, no, no suggestions. Uh, so no suggestions dot web dot cern dot ch. So if I now do a watch on the routes, the operator again will read this description of what I want from the Drupal site. It will detect, oh, he, he, he wants a second site URL. I'm going to create the route, I'm going to publish it, and I'm going to make it available for everyone. So without further ado, I can copy again, go to the browser, open the URL, and well, it's the same site. Well, it's empty, but it's the same site. Um, yeah, so like, like, my, like my friend sh showed you before and I'm showing again, this is what we have with a, our out-of-the-box um, package. So what if I want to add a new module into our package? So uh, we had a discussion with our users and we see that the community could really uh, use another module. Um, to do that, uh, we just go to our GitLab repository, which hopefully I have it here. Uh, Drupal, turn Drupal distribution. We should have here, uh, like uh, my friend shows you, the composer.json. And now I would like to request a quick help from my audience and s get a suggestion of a new module to add quickly to our Sun Drupal distribution. Anyone wants to give a module uh, suggestion? No? Workspaces. Workspaces, okay. Uh, let me just confirm that I don't have workspaces on Composer. So, uh, grep. workspaces, just like this? No, I don't have workspaces, so it's a good example. Okay, so I'm going to run Podman. So basically, when we want to, to add the, um, to our CERN Drupal distribution anything, uh, I don't rely on my machine. Actually, this machine has been freshly installed, so I'm sorry for all the hiccups. Uh, we rely on using Docker or Composer, and we run our own machine in uh, our uh, locally, so we can actually build everything consistently. So, CERN Drupal distribution. Hopefully, I have it in the chat here. Uh, no, no. Okay, so Podman. Uh, IT, no. actually, dog, oops. CERN, Drupal distribution. Okay, so hopefully this will run, but I don't have Docker. Podman. And well, so wha what I'm doing here quickly is just I'm mounting the, uh, my folder, work folder, where I have cer the repository into the image. And I have this image here, which hopefully still exists. Okay. So I'm inside the, mm -hmm. oh, I don't have the image, this doesn't look good. Okay, so actually maybe I should do it manually because I can just add it manually, I guess, because my machine is not working properly. So uh, does anyone know uh, what is the latest version? Or oh, actually we can put any version, right? So workspaces and we can define, sorry? So, sorry, could you repeat that? W-S-E? W-S-E, like this. Uh, well, I need to give... Oh, sorry, and the uh, version, do we... Thanks. 
And uh, which version should we require to be in? Um, uh, we can just say three. I don't know which version this runs on. Okay, I can put 1.0. Okay, so this is enough. Sorry for the hiccup, and hopefully uh, I'm s you're still with me. So, well, in the Git repository, we see the difference here of Composer. Uh -huh. So we added the new module. We can add this and call it uh, new feature. Now I'm going to create a new branch and call it DrupalCon. Git checkout, sorry, checkout B, DrupalCon, because it doesn't exist. Okay, so now I'm in the, uh, a feature branch, and I'm going to push the, these changes with the new composer. And well, GitLab will say that this is uh, possibly a merge, so I'm going to go quickly to GitLab, where we host our this, all this uh, CRM Drupal distribution. So we can create a merge request. I don't know if you noticed already on the pipeline, there's something already running. So like my, my colleague has, has said, one, every time we create a new change, the pipeline is run, it is executed, a new image is created. This image will be a feature image and we can then push this feature image to our production cluster, dev cluster, or even in our machine to see ev if everything works as we expect. Uh, so we can say new feature, workspaces. I'm not, I'm not going to push too much here. I'm just doing this. And I create a merge request. And well, before merging it, I want to be sure that it doesn't destroy what I already had. So after creating the image, we still have a few extra steps where we would see the same website being created into a specific place. The same way that I just created now a website, it will create automatically. It will check a few things. And if everything is all right, then it will say, okay, the test has passed. This means that it's deployable, not only on staging or, the, or, or dev, but it will also run on production correctly. So our pipeline is currently still building the image. Uh, in a bit, a little bit, hopefully it will have, have finished. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So like I said here, I have a Drupal site. I'm going to edit this Drupal site. Uh, also, I don't know how familiar you are with Kubernetes overall, but uh, in the Kubernetes um, resources usually have two important fields in any resource, not only the custom ones, which are the specification and the status. So uh, the specification is where I can change things and where basically I, I define how I want the world to be in, and the status will say basically how it's currently in. So we can see here that it's already using that image for debugging purpose, we can always uh, explore further. Uh, the image has still not been done. So in a bit, I will just change this version here. And instead of being a version v9.4, it will be the branch name. And then we will use the commit from the release. So the branch name was, oh, It was DrupalCon, right? I mean, oh, I, we I can just wait for the pipeline to finish because it should be finalizing hopefully in a minute. And just to uh, explore it later. So basically, if this was to be merged and then the new version release has been finalized, then I can just go to all websites in all production uh, uh, versions and just update it with the latest one. So if I ever want to just update, for example, Drupal core to a, a new version, all I have to do is make these changes on GitLab, run the CI, the image is run. I know that the image will not break anything. Then I just go to all the cluster and say, now this is the new release and basically the cluster will take care of everything for me. So as you can see here, the image has been pushed. So uh, the image is this feature one, when if it's a production one, it will tag it as a release. I say here, this is the version that I want. Yeah. So the version name is always the, um, the branch name and the release spec will basically be the tag. So I changed the Drupal site. And again, my operator has noticed that the specification that I gave 
is different and that it has to do something. So what it's doing now is, to, is it's ramping up. And I can do actually a watch. XQCTL get pods. Um, you see that it's trying to ramp up a new pod. This new pod is with a new specification, which is the image that we just created. Uh, it will try, really try, but maybe not succeed to actually have zero downtime. So if I get the route here through PodCon, if I do a curl and I try to get the status code, HTTP status. Mm -mm. Oh, well. So I can do here a check to this endpoint. Oh, it's 200, 200. Well, it's already running the new one. Um, so we saw that a new pod got created. So this one is brand new. And this one should theoretically be running the new image. So we can actually test that by going to the website. So if we go again to the website and refresh, session should remain the same because Drupal stores the session uh, and it's not within the pod. And now we work look for workspaces, right? Workspaces. So there it is. So now just with this simple change, uh, workspaces. Uh, okay, so which one is it? Uh, is it any of, is it this one? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so basically it's this one and became available to anyone. So basically now, uh, if you wanted to use this uh, new feature that we just deployed to everyone, you just have to check it and install it and that's it. Um, I don't know if, it, by the way, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to interject. Um, but imagine that if we want to, to go back, uh, I, I can easily go back into the old version and we see that if we put the old version, which is this release with this release spec, um, V9.4-1 and with the real, what? Sorry, with this release spec and we watch again, um, we see that the new pod is again rolling because like I said before, the operator again detected, oh, there's a change in the image. I have to update again the deployment. Uh, the other one is already terminating. Uh, we actually saw a 1503. So you can actually see that it was barely out of uh, an available. It's almost zero seconds. This is one thing that we have to improve. But basically with this, I have just deployed the same website with minimal downtime. And again, with the new version, this is basically a change in the module, but it could be a change in anything. And now I should not be able to find workspaces. Workspaces. Well, now I just find this. Yes. Libraries or modules, for example, or you always rely on, on fetching them from their place So basically, you're, in, uh, you're questioning if we cache our images. No, no. If you are, when you are building something new uh, mm -hmm. library that has used been used already before in another place, but is being added. So if there's a library that you want to add, yeah, then or a model, a contributed yes. model, anything. Mm -hmm. Do you always rely on the original source? Yes. So basically, each image once created it's immutable, so it will remain with all the packaging that has been created on. But if at some point you want to update to a module, like you said, from upstream, we push it to the Git repository, and only uh, only then you are basically fetching from upstream. So we always rely on upstream for fetching the stuff, but once we create the images and we deploy them, then we basically hold these images and we can always re, uh, redeploy them. Um, well, basically, uh, the, the, the goal of the demo was this, was basically to show that uh, I can easily change our distribution into adding a new theme, a new module, anything based on the community request. Um, and the second point, which I find interesting to, to show, is that this is basically Kubernetes native. So none of this is particularly specific, let's say, to CERN. This could be deployed in any Kubernetes cluster. Obviously, there's a few extra 
features that were added for the certain specific uh, requirements, but overall the idea is the same. Um, and now I suppose we can go to the questions, uh, which should be on. Did I, okay. So feel free to throw questions. Yes. What about the so li like my colleagues showed, uh, I, I don't think we have time in terms of demo to do this. But if you were to, and this I can show you again in the terminal. Uh, so the question was, what about uh, ex com uh, custom modules? So if you have, um, you mean personal custom modules, module modules that you can create. Okay, so all of this, um, like uh, as persistent storage, so our pods are, so if I get the pod here, this pod here that is running our website, can be, uh, well, we can get into the pod. Uh, where's the slash? And P let's go to the PHP FPM container. Uh, what, did I lose, okay, I lose the character there. Okay, so once uh, I'm, I'm here uh, on our, uh, one of our containers, this is the one running PHP FPM, we can see that we have something which is uh, the Drupal data, which is actually the one on top. So basically we can see that our persistent storage is currently empty. At any point you can go to the Drupal data and here on under modules folder, you can add any custom module. And basically here you just dump the folder it's like any other module. And there's a link between this and the PHP code. So actually we can even try that. We can actually go to uh, Upstream, what will, any module that you want to dump directly there? But basically what I would do is uh, you would tell me the link and I would download the zip into this folder here. I would do a drush cache uh, reset basically and then it would be available to enable um, to the website. Is that the same for WebDAV? So we have WebDAV support? Yes, so we also have WebDAV so you can also mount the file system of the website into your local machine or have it in the browser for convenience, basically. Um, any other questions? Uh, I'm gonna wait and answer yours, I don't know if you already mentioned this, but uh, well, what was the business need that uh, justified this entire infrastructure? How many websites are we talking about? Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, you uh, indeed missed the presentation because it's actually one of our first points. Uh, yeah, so this is the a simple graph that was extracted a few days ago and basically at CERN, CERN has a lot of experiments happening even though we have like the large hydrant collider as um, our main um, point. Uh, there's a lot of, of small experiments, a lot of different things that are being tested and all these experiments might be interested in having their own website that they have a full control over to expose to their communities as well as maybe you can or wants to create an internal website within the CERN community to show a few things. Uh, basically, you can rely on the CMS Drupal to create your own websites and have it mostly maintained by us. So if you just use like uh, the, the, the repository that I showed you, you don't have to worry about anything. Drupal gets automatically updated to the new core version. The modules also get automatically updated. You as a user, don't worry about anything. You're just a content management provider. Yeah, uh, you said that you're merging the uh, composer JSON if you have a custom one. Yes. So um, where I was thinking normally uh, what I would do is to make this uh, shared um, mm. distribution a, a dependency instead of. Okay, there's a, there's a reason behind this. So this is the ver the approach that we support. So at CERN, uh, this is in uh, engineering perspective. Any custom module has its costs. And at the, in the CERN community, the focus is on physics. We uh, do IT for supporting their experiments, both on providing websites for public hosting, but also for computing needs. Uh, so we try as much as possible to uh, demotivate users from creating custom custom modules that you put into a folder and you forget about it. And in five years, they have to be maintained. But if you have a composer, usually it's a package manager, so it will automatically update, uh, or at least it will be able to update easier than if you just dump a folder with static content. I'm not sure if the, that answers the question. Uh, maybe. 
<laughs> yeah, because so the way I would think about it would be that each if, if each website has mm -hmm. uh, its own repository, which mm -hmm. but I think it maybe it doesn't. No, it doesn't. By default, no. you just use our repository. Ah, so and uh, so most of maybe some websites have their own repository. Yes. So and there then are they have this composer JSON that is being merged. Yes. With the other one, but you it's not. But I would think if I have my own composer JSON, then I would just add this other thing as a dependency, and then I don't. There's no merging. You, you don't need to worry. So basically, what ah. you do is on your GitLab repository, you create this small composer with all the modules that you need, and basically you uh, create uh, a web hook. Basically, so basically there's a trigger. So every time the GitLab changes, it, it will tell the cluster, "Look, the this repository has changed, and I have a new module." And the operator uh, will fetch that repo, it will merge it with our composer, and this guarantees that you also prov get uh, the modules that we provide, the themes that we provide. Because like I said, if you look at the website, uh, sorry, on site five, that's, uh, on this website, it's also of, let's say, interest of, uh, you're interested as, as a user to, don't, to not worry a lot about themes and looks. So like I said, this is one of the themes that we provide out of the box. And it's just simple because you already have the CERN look and feel and all you have to do is add, add extra stuff. So it's usually you don't want your full composer. How do you handle configuration? Is the configuration shared across all sites? No, like no. They're each, each, each instance has its own configuration, its own database. They live completely isolated. Content types and so on. Yes. And yeah. uh, you don't, do you have some kind of starter kit to get the basic content types yeah. or something? So li like I showed you, this is basically the super start kit. So like I showed you in a YAML, we have a, a portal that is more fancy and you just have, I mean, I can show it if you, if you want to. Uh, web services portal. So basically here, this is our web services portal. And if we at some point want to create a Drupal site, which we, we just come here and just say create a Drupal site, we say if it's official, for, so it's for the organization. If it's personal, because you might want to have your personal website to where you show your paper submissions, your presentations, etc., or a test website where you're testing something, and then you just give it a site description, a site name, the type of profile, so the CERN or Easy Start. These are the two basic themes that we provide. And once you click on this in two minutes, you have the website up and running. Well, very similar to this one. And this has content types and fields uh, already or not? This doesn't have a lot of content. This has mostly just integration. So if, if you go here to the extensions, we'll see that uh, CERN, we have quite a few modules that are here and you can enable. There's actually a bunch of them. Uh, we also have uh, something called Indico, where we, um, sorry, Indico, where we uh, publicize our uh, events internally, and basically this is integration with your website. This comes out of the box, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm answering your question. Uh, um, you can say no if it's. Uh, so I assume this events module then has some config to for a content type or something. Uh, sorry. The events module might then have a content uh, type configuration. This is a better question. Uh, actually, uh, I have the web team with me, so basically I'm infrastructure. To be honest, I'm not yeah, really okay. a Drupal. No, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm not a Drupal expert whatsoever. I'm an infrastructure engineer, and I try as much as possible to automate Drupal. But once we reach this point of actually hang, hanging, uh, um, uh, sorry, managing modules, etc., actually I have my two colleagues here that they are from the web team. They are in the first row, and they probably can reply that question better than me. We uh, can also talk later if you want. Or or if you want, yeah, you can have a discussion later. I don't know. If, if feel free if you want to uh, to reply. Okay. You, you, I guess you can discuss later unless anyone else is interested. But can they can also ask them. Um, any other questions? Uh, curiosities. Yeah. Um, how is the automatic updates uh, and project browser initiative gonna affect uh, your workflows? Uh, well, we haven't gave it too much of a thought. So uh, at least for now, we accepted the fact that we that we have to basically update the core, update everything. So at, at least until further notice, we will continue with this workflow where basically we just have to update the composer and the operator does everything for you and on updating. If at some point they may they make improvements on the life cycle, we just integrate it to our use case simply without much of a fuss. So is this is this is updating the and, and offering new features the main uh, no, things that this does that you guys no, do? No, it's it's a bunch of things. So this, uh, as you said, uh, automatics is one very good improvement from our infrastructure. But the second is the deployment itself. So this is basically a deployment that uh, is easily easy to 
uh, duplicate through test. So basically, as if at some point you want to test something out, creating a clone with this infrastructure is automatic. You ca I can cl create a clone within two, three clicks again. And basically, Kubernetes will create a separate instance that is fully integrated with CERN ecosystem. Uh, so basically, it automatically integrated with our single sign-on, but also it will also create for you a database. So you don't have to worry on anything about the Drupal and everything is hosted uh, in in house, all uh, all self hosted. Okay. Our main focus is usually uh, version, like so it's peer to peer, and it's like supporting those stuff. If you're asking about the features that we support, it's we just put the basic stuff. Okay. Um, just a second. Um, okay. And any other questions? Hi, um, in your CI/CD pipeline, you mentioned you had automated tests. I'm yes. curious what kind of tests you have, especially around security. Oh, that's a good uh, question. <laughs> yeah. no, it's a very good question. So, um, well, we first, first and foremost, we rely a lot on uh, Kubernetes itself, on OpenShift uh, and all its feature. Oh, so the pipeline is finalized, as you can see, and the okay. test, the tests have passed. Um, we actually do two tests, so I'm, I'm not sure how, visi how visible it is, I'm sorry. Uh, the tests are, are really simple. So th what the tests actually do is they create a new website out of the box with the version you just created. And the tests that are made are basically you can run the website and the website has SSO integration. And the other one clones an already existing site which already has a few modules and basically updates them and see that they run. There's no security tests, so on the application layer, if Drupal is not really secure, we will we could be exposed. Uh, our advantage here is that since we don't use things like multi-sites, even if a website gets exposed, it's minimal because you cannot get access to any other website or anything else basically. You just get access to the website itself and to what admins could have access to. Um, one thing that we try, uh, and it's the, the advantage of the, of the way that we have with automatic updates, is we try to be as possible, as soon as possible, up to date. So whenever Drupal itself publishes a new patch, uh, security, etc., we basically are able to put it to production if we want within the day. We usually don't do it within the day because we want to guarantee as much as possible that nothing will break. It's, if it's usually just a patch upgrade, we can do it within the day. It's, it's a matter of just, like I did now, doing a, a composer update with the new uh, Drupal version, run the CI. Once the version is, is uh, released on the CI, I just update all websites in the YAML file that I initially showed with the latest release, and that's it. And within minutes, everyone is up to date again. Um, any question? No? Okay, so if there's no more questions, thank you so much for attending. Um.